Eisman with the Kościuszko Foundation series Artist in a Spotlight. Today I have the pleasure to present to you Zofie King. Zofie King is a fascinating interdisciplinary artist whose work leaves no one indifferent, but everyone intrigued and eager to ask questions. Zofie's sculptures draw upon a long tradition of the cabinets of curiosities. She creates her complex art pieces using various found objects, which change their meaning or gain a new context once juxtaposed or combined with each other. In her art, Zofie often refers to the current social and political issues, creating visual allegories of them. Zofie King was born in Poland, raised in Germany, and finally settled in the United States in 1998. She received her undergraduate degree in psychology, and on the way to becoming a visual artist, she practiced interior design and took art classes at the prestigious Maryland Institute College of Art and the Corcoran. Since 2012, she has focused solely on her studio work and participated in many individual and group art shows in the Washington, D.C. area. Today, I have the pleasure to connect with Zofie through a video interview. Hi, Zofie. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you and learn more about your art. Hi, Isa. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you to the Kosciuszko Foundation and uh, to all the viewers today. Um, I appreciate you visiting me in my studio today. Sophie, I have to say that your art is very unique. I'm probably not alone in this impression. It's something that we don't usually see at the art galleries and museums. How you as an artist describe your work? Could you tell us more about your process about your mediums and about your artistic background. I consider myself to be a sculptor working in assemblage and I use found objects including natural objects as well as antiques which are really objects with a history. I also create my own components using resin, plaster, molded paper, uh, use gesso, black gesso a lot to cover parts of my pieces. I use finishes like encaustic and watercolor and other finishes. I also use photographic techniques, uh, especially cyanotypes, as well as photo transfers. I use lights and I also use fabrics and thread. Um, I especially love to use velvet. So you could say that I really use a multimedia approach. I graduated with a psychology degree in the early 2000s at which point I had already been working as a ceramic artist. I then got into interior design, which I worked in for several years, um, before becoming a full-time studio artist, which was around 2012. Um, I would say that I've been really influenced by psychology, um, really interested in uh, psychological processes and phenomena about um, motivations and perceptions, um, you know, people's behavior, um, as well as by interior design, as far as the visual aesthetic, um, I would say that the materials that I use and the way that I create vignettes with them is somewhat reminiscent of um, interior design boards, um, as well as gothic polyptics, which um, is something that I'm just really interested in uh, medieval artwork. Zofi, your sculptures can be categorized, as you said, as cabinets of curiosities, a very unique form of artistic expression with a long tradition. Why did you choose it and when did you first start building your art pieces? Cabinets of curiosity um, resemble a collection of interesting objects that may inspire curiosity and interest in what's behind the objects and what ideas it encompasses. Um, it, it's sort of an early form of science where people would see things and they were just interested in them and then they might look into where they came from or the people who owned them and so um, that became a thing. I spent a lot of time at the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore um, back when I lived in Maryland and then after, after I became a mother, I also went to the Natural History Museum a lot, so I think just seeing objects that evoke curiosity um, has been interesting and um, I've become 
mesmerized by certain objects. So I think that's been sort of a way for me to set up my work um, using objects that create interest and, uh, you know, maybe are part of a bigger idea and symbolize aspects of that idea. Sophie, and can you now tell us more about your interest in biography? Has and how your international multicultural background influence you as a person and as an artist? So my whole family is from Poland and I have been especially close with my grandmother who still lives in Łódź. She's uh, almost 95 years old. And when she was barely 15 years old, um, in April 1940, um, the Germans came in and took the Polish people to be sent off to do forced labor. Um, this was all at the same time that um, Jewish people were sent off to death camps. So, um, you know, that was help happening simultaneously. So. My grandmother talks about her experiences, and I actually asked her to record some of these stories for me. Um, there's one in particular that I turned into a piece, um, which I call La Paloma. Um, it's based on a song that she says she and her peers came up with while on a, on a train on a long journey to, you know, who knows where. Um, so they, they used this popular hit at the time, La Paloma, and when I, when I researched it, it's a song about a shipwreck and, uh, and doves that are released by um, the people stranded on this shipwreck to send final messages to their loved ones. So I used different aspects of my grandmother as sort of a portrait that I created, a sculptural portrait. It's also one of my earliest um, altar reminiscent pieces. Um, so I used objects that um, either represent her or objects that she has actually been in touch with, such as um, these crocheted pieces here, which came from a sweater that she actually made um, that I arranged as sort of spider web, as well as photos from that time, which also include my grandfather, whom she met during this time. Um, so I just have different things that symbolize her, um, you know, the pawn and uh, you know the, her Catholic faith and her sort of self-made crafts craftsmanship that she uh, that she adopted, and it also includes audio, which um, is triggered by a motion sensor, and it's actually her voice and it's the the song that they composed on the train, which um, I will play for you now. This is another piece about my grandmother. It's called the provocation. And when she was 15 and she was a forced laborer on this German farm, the owner of the farm kind of headed out for her. They did not get along. So one time, um, one evening he came in and he was screaming at her because he accused her of having left these potato peels on an icy step. And when she denied this, he, uh, he came at her with a cane. So she took it from him and threw it across the room and, and ran out um, to where she was staying. And that night, uh, a police officer came to her quarters and he, he beat her up um, until she was bruised. So um, she says that the next morning, the police officer came back and he um, received food for his service. So this is a story that has really stuck with her. I'm sure it was very traumatic. I made this piece using an actual German walking stick um, that I found, as well as um, these cyanotypes that have pictures of my grandmother, which I'll show you close-ups close of. Um, 
really see how young she was at that time. Um, I, t I took the cyanotypes and I, I draped, I draped molded the paper over actual potatoes. And then I also used actual potato peels um, draped around here. So again, it has, it has kind of a feel of a, sort of a, like maybe like a roadside altar. Um, you know, it's got this kind of dramatic hand going up. The hand is made out of rice paper. So, um, yeah, this is kind of a little memorial of, of that experience that she had. That's very interesting, Zafi. Could you tell us more about what you as an artist find inspirational? Uh, your art is obviously influenced by political and social issues. Uh, do you find ideas also somewhere else? My artist inspirations include Ed and Nancy Keenholz as well as Louise Bourgeois, both of which use assemblage and found objects as a way to process ideas about um, our roles in society, about our interaction within society. Um, I think that psychological processes and um, psychological phenomena, phenomena are particularly of interest to me. Um, I like to sort of process how we um, refine our, how, how we define ourselves um, and our roles and how we interact within the society. Um, so this is a particular piece that I made. Um, I call it Obey and um, specifically talking about women's roles. Um, this is a piece that I made using a, a doll oven as well as an East Lake chair back. And I happened to find both of them and they fit together really well, um, in particular because this is from the 1950s and this is from the 1890s. Um, and both of them being time periods that have been very res restrictive to women. And uh, it's generally based on the the story of Saint Rita, um, this one in particular written by, by a Spanish priest. And, and I read this, this little excerpt of this, of this book and it talks about how um, she was such a silent, obedient woman who um, you know, was so forgiving of her own abuse and this is presented as a, as a role model to women, um, which I find very problematic. So, um, so I made this piece. Um, in addition to uh, the chair back and the and the oven, there's a there's a vintage leather punching bag, and it has a beehive motif spray painted on it, as well as a bee, um, which is uh, there's this whole part of the legend where there's a, there's bees around Saint Rita as an infant, so that's symbolic of her. Um, at the top, there's a cyanotype and a prosthetic eye and uh, and and velvet backing that I made. Um, just to kind of talk about, you know, the, the German word for, um, for black eye is Feichen. And so this is a Feichen, um, cyanotype print. Um, so, so I kind of put this piece together to sort of process that whole story and, uh, you know, that being put forward as a, as a role model. Um, so that's, that's the story about that piece. Here's another piece that examines women's roles. It's, uh, it's a piece I call Immured, and I haven't shown it yet um, as opposed to the other pieces. Um, I made it in 2019. It's based on uh, Albanian folktale the, um, about the Rozafa castle, and it's about a young mother who is immured um, in this castle for the protection of the castle and and she agrees um, under the condition that um, her hand, eye, breast, and foot uh, are left out of the wall so that she can pat, see, nurse, and rock her her newborn son. Um, so again, this is sort of presented as a heroic act by this mother. Um, She's sort of revered, and it's a it's a pretty shocking story if you if you think about it. Um, really horrible and sad, um, and you know she's she's sort of this hero image, even though you know everything about it is completely unfair. And you know as shocking as it is, as a mother, I can also somehow identify with it because you know as mothers you make sacrifices for your child. 
but you know, I just I just think of it as a very sort of dark story, um, very incredibly incredibly sad. So, so I made this piece about this legend. It's hard to not to be affected by what's going on around us. Can you tell us how this current pandemic influence you as a person and also as an artist? And can you tell us and maybe show us what you're currently working on? So since the pandemic started, um, I haven't really been anywhere except for the forest. And uh, I've taken my three-year-old along and we've spent lots of time in nature studying plants and birds and, and especially fungi, um, with, which I've been really obsessed with lately. It takes me back to a time, again, I'm mentioning my grandmother, when she would uh, visit me in Germany and after it rained we would go out with a little basket and we would collect mushrooms and uh, you know as an Eastern European there's this tradition of collecting and cooking with mushrooms and I feel like this has kind of connected me with that ancestry so um, this is a piece that I've, I've worked on um, I've used turkey tail and other bracket fungi in it, um, as well as other found objects, both natural and antique. Um, I'm using an old clock case to sort of, uh, it's sort of a nod to the time that we've all spent kind of waiting to see what's going to happen next. Um, I've also thought about this idea of hunter-gatherers, about a hunter-gatherer ancestors and how we still have certain, you know, instincts in us that we maybe sublimate in other ways. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out how to work that into the piece. Um, it's going to have embroidery and then it's going to connect with this thread. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking about how we maybe, how we hunt for likes or collect friends on Facebook. So kind of a modern way of being a hunter-gatherer. Um, another piece that I've worked on here, and you can just see part of it over here, it's, um, it's a piece that I started in March when, when this pandemic started to uh, be really real. Um, and I found a bunch of objects in my studio that you know, reminded me of different aspects of it. And uh, so this is a piece about COVID-19 um, and, uh, and the way that it's panned out, um, the way that it affects people, um, and also the way that it's been managed um, are kind of all in this piece. Um, and I'm hoping to show it in the future when the pandemic is actually over. You know, it's, uh, it's an installation piece. So um, I've, used, uh, I've used lab glass, a cage, I've used um, paper molded uh, pieces with encaustic on top. I've used lots of fabric velvet. Um, I also, oddly, I was working with these watercolor ink blots before this all started, so I, I worked those in. Um, they're sort of like these little little monster demon creatures um, that symbolize the virus. So um, yeah, this is a piece that I'll hopefully be able to show soon. Um, and uh, other than that, um, yeah, I've had shows canceled and uh, moved to the virtual realm, which I've still, I'm still adjusting to. I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing this now. I've done several of these virtual studio visits now. Um, I've had one piece in a group show, an actual group show at McLean Center for the Arts, so I was thankful to have that. And um, I mean, other than that, I mean, having a small child, I've spend a lot of time, you know, on childcare and, you know, that's been really great. Um, but also I've not really had very much time in the studio. So I've just kind of stolen little glimpses of time here and there, uh, to work in here. And, um, yeah, just still thinking, making mental notes. So, you know, as artists, we just kind of do what we can with what we have. So that's kind of where I stand. So, Thank you for letting me do this. Zofi, thank you so much. It was very interesting. And thank you for the opportunity to see your studio and speaking with you. 
Uh, I look forward to speaking with you soon again and to actually see your artwork in person at the art show. Thank you.